For almost a year, we have spoken on the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show of the society changing stakes of the battle for the constitutional right to abortion. What overturning that right would mean for women, for the future of humanity. That reality is now here, denied. The reactionary leap of the Supreme Court decision is sending shockwaves throughout society. Reverberations have just begun. The challenge of every person with a shred of conscience for the lives of women, for the future of all, stands before us all. Lives are already shattering. From Texas to Ohio, women are turned away from clinics in agonizing tears forced to bear children against their will. Those women who can get to states where abortion is still available find compassionate yet terrified, overworked staff, tears shed by patients and staff as appointment schedules fill up and can't be met. And then there is the horror of the child victim of rape, 10 years old, denied abortion. This is cruelty, a vicious state-imposed subordination of women. The Revcoms, with the leadership of Baba Vakian, have said for years forced motherhood is female enslavement. Journalists and scholars are now discovering this, as if it hasn't been warned of and discussed before. But let's not pull punches. Among some quarters of the so-called official women's movement, such as the Women's March, protesters for the last year were told by the Women's March they couldn't wear handmaid's costumes, they couldn't bring hangers, all this is part of their woke excuse for capitulation to accepting the defeat of Roe versus Wade in advance. And this barely begins to get at the level of censorship, suppression, and outright attack against those who have fought for the people to stand up and resist. Conciliation and capitulation has been the stance of the Democratic Party and the NGOs for decades now. But there is another side to this picture. Masses of women, especially young women, taking to the streets in fury with the determination that this right will not be surrendered. Taking to the streets in the days immediately after the Supreme Court decision in, tens, in their tens of thousands with the leadership of Rise Up for Abortion Rights. Green bandanas, the international symbol of fighting for the fundamental right to abortion, filled the screen seen all around the world. Rise Up's battle cry of illegitimate was thrown back at the theocratic Supreme Court. Illegitimate! Illegitimate! Coco Das, a leader of Rise Up for Abortion Rights in Texas, has captured the enormity, the illegitimacy of the gauntlet that was thrown down. She said a fanatical Christian fundamentalist majority of the Supreme Court said Roe was wrongly decided, and women all over the country got the message that they are not free, that their bodies are not their own, that their destinies would be shaped by the state, by the church, by men, end quote. Yet, the day after the Supreme Court decision, a motley cabal of so-called pro-choice groups issued a despicable screed to denounce and discredit and even by one group to dismantle Rise Up for Abortion Rights, the only organization that took responsibility for waging the nationwide fight to stop the Supreme Court from overturning the right to abortion. A key accusation of these haters' pathetic and baseless bag of lies was the role in RU4IR of the Revcoms, revolutionary communist followers of the revolutionary thinker and leader Bob of AKMBA. Their attack stinks of piggish shit setting forth false pretexts for government, fascist, and other deranged attacks. This kind of hit job on resistance movements and revolutionaries has been seen before in this country. However, that poisonous legacy does not mitigate the potential harm done, all the more so in the current culture, where no matter how baseless, how without merit, mere accusation becomes guilt in the feverish social media fingers of the cancel culture mob. Were there any of those who wrote and are behind this attack on Rise Up for Abortion Rights and the Revcoms are actually pigs. They are definitely doing the dirty work of the pigs, the repressive state of this system. And the Revcoms issued a statement two days after the attack in defense of the emancipation of humanity and the leadership we need to get there. And I urge everyone watching, even those who have already read it, to go online and read the full statement. It takes on in great depth the bogus charges of homophobia and transphobia, 
Just because Rise Up accurately identifies the main target of the attack on abortion rights as an attack on women. In, ad in addition, Revcom.us carries a number of important documents from the Revcoms and from Bob Avakian on this, including passages from the Constitution for the New Socialist Republic in North America that pertain to the rights of LGBTQ people. But because of time constraints, I'm going to focus on what is in some senses and for some forces the principal target of this attack, Bob Avakian. Rise Up for Abortion Rights, RU4AR, has answered this from their point of view, and we strongly suggest that anyone who cares about the truth and the future of women and all humanity read their statement. We Revcoms, who from our revolutionary perspective support the mission and the goals of Rise Up, intend to refute the specific attacks made on us. This statement then goes on to unequivocally state for the record that these are outright lies, invented charges, and dangerous libel. The Revcom statement points out that these haters make outrageous, utterly false, and extremely irresponsible and dangerous claims that the Revcoms are using monies raised by RU4AR. The Revcoms have never, ever received or used funds raised from the people for struggles we are involved in for any other purposes than the movement such funds were raised for. To accuse us otherwise is again a blatant lie. These false attacks smack strongly of the tactics of the right-wing fascist forces in this country and the political police, the FBI, who create pretexts to go after revolutionary groups. Moreover, the ad hominem attacks on Bob Avakian, as well as Rise Up co-initiator, co-host of this show, Revcom, Sansara Taylor, paint targets on the backs of specific individuals for government harassment and even worse. And what these sowers of ignorance who attack us think is their big ideological gun is the charge of cult. They wrote that their website claims, that our website claims, only effective way to achieve social change is to follow Avakian's leadership and teachings. No. Revcom.us makes the claim that Bob Avakian's leadership and the new communism he has brought forward is absolutely essential, not for some vague notion of social change under capitalism but for making revolution and emancipating humanity, for breaking all the chains of this capitalist imperialist empire and its system, with all of its horrific division of the globe and its oppressive social relations and antagonistic conflicts. The charge of cult is ignorant, cowardly, and irresponsible. How many of those banding this charge about, or blindly falling for it, have actually read anything from Bob Avakian, to slander something, or to join in a mob with absolutely no knowledge of what you are attempting to isolate and destroy is the mark of an utter lack of integrity. And speaking of integrity, Bob Avakian is a person of extraordinary integrity. Do you know what it is to not give up on revolution when most of the others who took up that mission already have? And more, to fearlessly interrogate the whole communist project? for the emancipation of humanity all over the world and not flinch from criticism of that first wave of communist revolution where necessary, while upholding its revolutionary emancipating essence? That shows deep intellectual courage and daring to forge the new communism and even to write a constitution for a new socialist republic in North America that could put us on that road. Some say they don't want to read an old white man because he has privilege. Privilege? Anyone who lives in the U.S. where we can measure the social cost of our smartphones, our designer coffee, our fast fashion, in the tears and the blood of third world children. Anyone who levies charges of privilege should really be a bit more careful when they're throwing that charge around. And here you are talking about Bob Avakian, someone who's devoted his life and risked his life to calling out that privilege as part of charting the path to getting to a world without any oppressive relations between different groups of people. Last week on the RNL Revolution Nothing Less show, we featured Don Noche Diaz, the spokesperson for the Revolution Club's national spokesperson, who read an excerpt of an article on Revcom.us, haters who don't want to hear about Bob Avakian, who don't want to hear about BA, are telling on themselves. We're going to play a part of that right now. There are people and forces out there who complain. We don't want to hear about BA. 
Why do you have to talk so much about him? Even worse and more disgusting are those who actively spread lies, slander, and distortions about B.A. All these haters are straight up telling on themselves. Whatever pose they might strike and however they might dress it up, here's what these people are truly saying. I really don't want an actual revolution. I'm scared of a real revolution. It makes me uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to hear about a real revolution. I'm not even willing to consider a real revolution. I want to get in on this system, not get rid of it. When you really get down to it, I don't actually think the world is that bad as it is. Get serious. If you want to know and radically change the world, go to Revcom.us and check out the work of Bob Avakin. And if you're in New York or, or the Bay Area, go to Revolution Books or go online to order the books. Now, the last section of the Revcom statement refuting this vicious attack that I'm going to highlight today is titled The Cancel Culture of Left-Wing McCarthyism. Because this historical experience is extremely important for young people coming into the struggle today to learn from. The statement says, back in the 1950s, there was an ugly phenomenon called McCarthyism, in which a senator named Joseph McCarthy accused people of being communist. And these people could be, and often were, driven from public life, hounded, imprisoned, and even worse. Now in the 2020s, these unprincipled pseudo-leftists engage in a new McCarthyism, in which the language police and self-appointed guardians of holy principles of identity politics wokeness not only attempt to cancel those with whom they disagree, but now apparently also invite the state in by spreading unsubstantiated and false charges. Just like the fascist MAGA mobs who swarm the decent people in school boards around the country, these wokesters swarm and harass online and IRL decent people who try to stand on principle and stand with the struggle with the effect of intimidating many people who could and should be standing up against this and instead to become cowed and to disassociate themselves from those who are under attack. After McCarthyism, the FBI started a counterintelligence program called for short COINTELPRO. And we're going to get into this in a future episode but you can read about it on Revcom.us this week. The point here is that the FBI used undercover operators, opportunists, and fools inside the movement to spread all kinds of nefarious dirt on individuals and organizations, and the social and revolutionary movements learned, often the hard way, how to detect and to combat that. I want to go back to the situation that occasioned this attack, the overturning of the right to abortion. Stripping this right away from half of humanity has been the battering ram and the linchpin of the fascist program over decades. A leap has now been made. Bob Avakian has made the analysis that we are living in a rare time in which something either very terrible, a lockdown fascist form of rule that would be even more vicious and repressive than the current version of capitalism imperialism, or something truly emancipating, a revolution, could emerge. The Revcom's refutation of this bullshit but dangerous attack concludes with this. The present situation with all of its dangers demand that you come to grips with some challenging but ultimately very liberating truths. Whether or not you ultimately come to agree with the heart of what Babavikian says is a process, a journey, as he himself has called it. But it is very, very wrong to refuse to engage it. And it is necessary to stand strongly against these baseless attacks on the human being who has devoted his whole life to making revolution and to making sure that the revolution is an emancipating one.